Hello my darlings and welcome back to my channel and to another video. So today I have a very exciting one for you, at least for me it's very exciting because I'm gonna sum up my whole Zara fragrance collection and I'm gonna share with you my absolute favorite. So let's say you don't know what to get from Zara but you want to try their gorgeous affordable fragrances and you just you just don't know what to get okay so these in my opinion are the ones you should start with and of course I have each fragrance for different occasion and different tastes so I think everyone will find something for themselves of course guys there are so many so many fragrances from Zara that I do not have here in this video that I haven't ever tried. Also, you have to keep in mind that sometimes uh, what's available in your country might not be available where I live and vice versa. So yes, let's just keep that in mind in this video. But I'm just gonna tell you that these are my absolute favorite fragrances from Zara to the point that I did get full bottles of them. So I'm gonna be completely straight up with you. I am not the, the biggest fan of those like cubes collection. Um, they are very inexpensive and there are good scents in there. I do like Gardenia, I do like Gourmand Addict. They are all very, very nice, however, I am still waiting for them to, I'll, I'm going to be honest, to change the packaging so that I actually like it. I've seen that they have rebranded their packaging once again and maybe at this point I will actually grab them. So from that least expensive line of Zara, which used to be in those cubes and they're more so colorful, what I really recommend is first one, Gardenia which kind of smells like black opium, so I don't know why it's called Gardenia, but to me it's like very nice and deep and rich. I actually highly recommend it, even though I'm not the biggest fan of black opium, but that one I really do like. It leans slightly more Middle Eastern than black opium does, at least for me. So that's one. The other one, as I said, Gourmand Addict, very, very nice fragrance. It's not too gourmand though. It To me it's more of a fresh but sweet fragrance if that makes sense so these two from that um so to speak least expensive collection are the two that i really really like um there's also another one that's very nice and that is called tuberose very nice um so yes in general i think they're quite likable they're inoffensive the only thing i have to say about that again, like cube, let's call it a cube collection, the original Zara collection, they don't really last that well. At least from my experience, they do not really last that well. I know there have been so many collections that I've missed. Unfortunately, it's too late for me to try them. So yes, um, these are the ones that I recommend, even though they do not last the best, but if you don't mind respraying and respraying, then you're good with them. But here I have the ones that are actually long lasting, that have gorgeous quality and they have beautiful packaging as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first one, maybe let's start with this. So if you love YSL Libre and Libre Intense, you absolutely need Golden Decade in your collection. This to me, as many of you say, it is actually a mix between the original Libre and Libre Intense. So you basically get best of both worlds. Since we have Golden Decade from Zara, I don't think it's necessary anymore to get the YSL. And I say this many, many times in my videos, YSL is at the moment so expensive and I'm not sure anymore if it's actually worth it. Um, so yes, I think that if in doubt, maybe if you're not too, too sure if you love the DNA, uh, I think you should definitely start with Zara. Also, if you don't want to spray your expensive perfume on a daily basis, if you only want to have it for special occasions, 
again go with the golden decade and even if you just don't feel like buying YSL at all this is a fantastic alternative and you just don't need the YSL one to be frank it is like this lavender vanilla with some slight fruity touch and jasmine uh, of course the nose structure is not fully disclosed from Zara just so you guys know but it's so 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 similar to Libre by YSL the longevity is fantastic so get yourself golden decade all right next one I have is from Jo Malone collection and uh, this one is fashionably London and this one many people compare to the Lena of course um, I again I said it before and I'm gonna say it again I really wouldn't say so to me it's more of a masky rose it has slight the Lena touch maybe like mm, some percentage in here maybe because it's rosy musky, yeah? Um, to me, actually, especially now that I had Corona, my smell definitely did change. And for the couple of last weeks, I actually smell more resemblance between this one and other Jo Malone fragrance that I adore, which is Rose and White Musk Absolute, which is an oud fragrance and it's very strong, potent, nice, long lasting. This one is definitely more airy, but I, f I keep seeing more and more similarities between these two rather than the Lena and Fashionably London. Uh, this one is beautiful, sweet rose. It has a very nice, slightly playful, but also very classy DNA. So I think if you are a fan of Rose, you are really gonna like it. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong with this, especially for the price. The packaging is super duper nice. I really like um, that Zara Jo Malone collection packagings. They're brilliant in my opinion. Um, so yeah, longevity is decent here. I get around seven hours with moderate... <laughs> <laughs> with moderate projection that's what I meant before I turned into a chicken so yes fashionably London very nice one. Oh, what do we have next to mix it up for you a little bit um, actually let's go with the previous collection and this one is Joe's rhubarb and of course as the name suggests it is a rhubarb fragrance um, this has slightly uh, earthy like woody earthy undertone or from the vetiver very very nice fragrance if you like and this is why I put this on this list if you like Hermes um, what is it called also a rhubarb fragrance in the uh, red bottle it's very similar this one is beautiful, slightly sour, refreshing. It has slight sweetness from uh, the very dry down of that rhubarb note. It really is a very natural smelling fragrance. I really like especially this collection uh, from Jo Malone because they smell so natural, so realistic. Love that. So yes, this one is fantastic. I love it on myself. As you can see, I did um, spray quite a bit. I like showering myself with it. It's gorgeous for right when you go out of the shower to just start your day with a nice zest. Also, it's amazing when you do workout, uh, when we go running with my boyfriend outside, uh, when we train at home. It's just so nice and refreshing. But also, to me, it's also perfect for every day, especially in spring and summer. And summer especially, it's going to be amazing. Uh, I do also like spraying my sheets with it. I'm not going to lie, I do do that because it just makes your sheets smell so good, guys. Like, so, so good. Um, very nice longevity for such a heavy citrus-oriented fragrance. Um, you know a freshy typical freshy it has good longevity I get some five to six hours 
with moderate projection. So yes, this is Joe's rhubarb, lovely one. All right, speaking of freshies, I'm just gonna go with the flow and talk to you about another one that I highly appreciate. To me, it's amazing. It's also from the same collection and this is Vetiver Pamplemousa. So this one is not rhubarb based, this is grapefruit based. And again, this is a gorgeous alternative for another fragrance from Hermes, from their Cologne range, which is the Pamplemousa fragrance, the grapefruit one in the green bottle. So you have another alternative to beautiful Hermes Freshy for a fraction of a price. So this one, I must say, it's not too different from Joe's Rhubarb, but to me, it's definitely more like, uh, more into that citrus, you know? If I were to compare them side by side, maybe you wouldn't smell it uh, when you wear them separately, but Joe's Rhubarb is actually way sweeter. Uh, whereas the Vetiver Pamplemousa has that bitter, bitter citrus undertone that it's exquisite if you want to refresh yourself. Uh, again, another that's perfect to refresh your sheets, not gonna lie. <laughs> very, very good for this purpose, but I do wear them all. This one literally smells like freshly squeezed orange with freshly squeezed uh, grapefruit and just mixed together with that whole pulp of the fruit, with the juice, with the water that comes out of it. This is what you get from Vetiva Pamplemousa. Supernatural smelling. It's so, so beautiful. It makes me uh, literally feel like I was drinking a juice that's freshly squeezed. Makes my mouth water. Very, very nice one. Um, they're both definitely unisex. Uh, Joe's rhubarb is a little bit sweeter and uh, Pamplemousa is just a little bit on that, you know, citrusy spectrum with slight bitterness, but gorgeous. Two of them are just gorgeous. Another one that I do recommend as well, uh, that's also a citrus from the collection, is Amalfi Sunray. I do not have it because I don't think... I'm gonna go through three of them. So I think two is more than enough for me. Uh, but if I didn't have many fragrances, I will probably also get Amalfi Sunray. Uh, Amalfi Sunray is very often on sale, as I see on Zara website. So go check it out. Whew. Okay, uh, next one, we've got something sweet, 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 sweet and tobacco-y, you already know. This is Rich Warm Addictive from Zara, very overhyped, uh, but for a good reason. I love the, I love the other one from the collection as well, which is um, Rich, not Rich, Dark Exclusive and I always forget the other adjective whatever, dark exclusive. Uh, that one is more like an aromatic sweet tonka with apple. This one, Rich Warm Addictive, is definitely more feminine leaning in my opinion, but I think they're both worth getting. However, if you completely don't know what to get from Zara, get this one first. This one is just so beautiful, so beautiful. Um, as the years go by, this fragrance gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. I'm not gonna lie, this is what's happening. This one is definitely the sweetest version of uh, all of them throughout the years, but it's still good. It's very vanilla, it's tobacco-y, um, sweet, oh, just amazing. It kind of reminds me of cinnamon apple pie as well. I really love that type of DNA. I love those scents. Scents like Parfums de Marley Aujan, um, Killian's Angel Share. This is in that same realm for, again, a fraction of the price. It will not last as long as the other two. Uh, but you know, if you love the DNA and you don't want to splurge, you can just keep it in your purse and keep respraying. Beautiful fragrance. This is definitely one of the best ones from Zara. Love it. Love, love, love it. Um, 
just get it guys just get it like it really doesn't cost much so you have to have it okay <laughs> all right for all my tuberose lovers we have a gorgeous one this one is just to die for i i'm gonna be honest i love it this one is called sublime epoch and this one is kind of a mix between armani my way and um, Lantardi from Givenchy. And since I do have Lantardi, and I do have so many other tuberose-based fragrances um, that I know I'm not gonna get rid of because they're niche, they're amazing quality, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I was actually supposed to get my way from Armani, but since I got Sublime Epoque, I don't think I need it. I truly don't think I need it. And if you are also in that um, problematic sphere of your life when you're thinking, should I get Armani my way? Should I get Givenchy Lantardy? I think you should get Sublime Epoque. This one is super duper pretty, like super duper pretty. It is that bubblegummy tuberose. It has some greenness to it, but it's also very sweet and beautiful and feminine and bubbly so 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 pretty super pretty um so i still do recommend having lanto de from givenchy because um, it is very like potent and super long lasting and it has beautiful pair to it so i do recommend having it uh, but maybe maybe replace your wishes for our money my way with sublime epoch to be honest unless you really really love uh, Armani My Way and that bergamot note this one Sublime does not have that citrusy accord that um, Armani has okay this one goes like straight up to that bubbly flirty sweet tuberose with some other white florals it's just so pretty very uplifting so so nice there is another tuberose that I do recommend from Zara which is called Tuberose Noir and it comes from this collection from Jo Malone. Uh, you do have to uh, be aware though that um, Tuberose Noir is way greener and way more savory. It's not as sweet, it's nearly not as sweet as Sublime Epoque. So if you prefer something that's not sweet I would choose Tuberose Noir but if you want that beautiful bubblegummy tuberose, I would go with Sublime Epoque. And that is all I can say. Great longevity on this one and very nice moderate to moderate plus of projection. So that is that. Um, next we've got Vibrant Leather for her. I know there also used to be True Leather and that one is not available in my country, unfortunately. Vibrant Leather is usually compared to Tuscan Leather from Tom Ford. But I actually believe that Vibrant Leather is way more feminine. It's actually easier to wear and let's not even mention the price right um if you are not crazy about leather fragrances this one i would say it's a bright citrusy fragrance with a leather undertone i wouldn't say it's straight up a leather fragrance but in general if you are not a massive fan of leather fragrances do not even go and splurge on Tom Ford. Start with something like Vibrant Leather from Zara. Or if True Leather is available in your country, go with True Leather as well. Just get them both. This one is beautiful because it's like this beautiful, suede, creamy, sweet fragrance. It has that gorgeous fruity touch. It's amazing, it's really amazing. And I think that Vibrant Leather really shines in spring and summer, not so much in fall and winter, at least for me. So this one is gonna be absolutely gorgeous now as spring is starting. So Vibrant Leather for her, gorgeous, great longevity and sillage, love it. All right, guys, um, 
Next we've got from Jo Malone again and that is, I have a lot of favorites here, okay? And I could pick more, trust me, I could pick more. Um, but this one is so good. Uh, this one is Ebony Wood. And this one you guys absolutely have to have if you want something unique from the brand. Uh, if you want something unlike anything really on the market because it's a gorgeous standalone fragrance. I wouldn't say it's that comparable to anything really. This one is a aromatic woody fragrance with heavy dose of cloves. To me it's quite fresh, sweet. It slightly smells like tea to me as well. Yeah, you do have to like cloves to love it. Even though I don't really love cloves now that I think of it and I still do like it. So maybe just test it. Just test it guys. But in general, if you love ebony wood, if you love those darker woods with a fresher undertone, I think this will be a gorgeous everyday fragrance. By the way, all of them are gorgeous for everyday. Uh, but ebony wood is definitely one of the most unique ones. It's also very unisex in my opinion. I actually have the bottle from the men's um, section. They're the same fragrances, just the color is different. I love it. I love it. It's really good. Um, I think that the longevity will depend how much you spray, uh, but I do get nice seven hours for sure maybe even pushing eight so ebony wood fantastic woody fragrance i have three more all right so let's finish with john malone uh, and i'm gonna finish off with captivatingly paris and this is a beautiful rose pear fragrance so if you love fragrances like the lina exclusive i think you're gonna adore it it has that very similar powderiness that the lina exclusive has that's why it reminds me of it i'm not saying the dupes they're not guys they're really not but you get a beautiful pear accord you get beautiful rose you'll get beautiful sweet undertones it's really nicely done and it lasts forever i think honestly from all these Jo Malone fragrances, even comparing to Ebony Wood, I think Paris is the most long lasting, at least on me. This one lasts forever on my clothes and on my hair, so I might get a backup of it because it's a very good scent. Um, I think, even though it's not a dupe for any of the Delinas, it has some similarity to the Lina Exclusive, it's definitely the same range of perfumes um, I think even though you might feel like it's nowhere near similar it's still worth having uh, if you love the Linas both of them I think you're gonna love this uh, if you want something very feminine gorgeous for every day and long-lasting I think you also should get it I think it is a safe blind buy it's just amazing this one was released a little bit um further in time comparing to that cap cities collection vibrant cities vibrant cities collection it was uh released a little bit later uh but for a good reason it's definitely a star of the show from the whole line love paris paris is very good and i think if you are maybe debating between london and paris i prefer paris uh, london is definitely good uh, but I think Paris is nicer and more, f more feminine, slightly more unique as well, maybe. So yes, you do have to, of course, see for yourself. But if you love fruity, rosy, very feminine fragrances, I think Paris is going to be your best bet. And now I have two more fragrances, both from the same line. And I'm going to stop rambling very very soon so stay with me for a couple more minutes the first one that i have is red temptation from this collection don't know how it's called um and this is really 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 similar to baccarat rouge 
uh, one of the best dupes that are on the market within this price range, if not the best. It has very nice longevity, six to seven hours, then you have to respray. It does have moderate projections, of course, it's nowhere near the true real Baccarat, but you still get the same DNA. Uh, people will definitely smell no difference um, unless it's Francis Kurjan, he might, I don't know. Uh, but when you're just wearing it throughout the day, people will never tell the difference. Uh, it's beautiful, transparent, airy, uh, way more near the original Baccarat than the X-Ray, just keep that in mind. This is the original EDP dupe, so to speak. Again, not the same longevity, but the scent is very similar. Uh, but for the price, I think the longevity is still decent. I highly recommend having it. This is that type of the fragrance that I think everybody should have, whether it's original Baccarat or a dupe of it. So yes, Red Temptation is a great alternative from Zara, guys. And of course, last but not least, uh, I don't know if you know what I'm going to show, but I think most of you do. And that is Rose Gourmand. And I love this one. I love Montal Intense Cafe. I love Mancera uh, Roses Vanille. I also love Francis Courjan uh, Gentle Fluidity Gold, which has some slight similarities in the DNA. And this one is just so good. Uh, this one to me, it is the most similar to Montal Intense Cafe. However, this one is not as dense. This one doesn't have that thickness and density that Montal Intense Cafe has. So I think it's going to be way better for spring and summer months if you love the DNA, but uh, Intense Cafe is just simply too thick for you um, because I know it, it's going to be very cloying in summertime and I will surely not wear Montal Intense Cafe in the heat. This one, I think it will be a little bit more wearable. It has very good longevity. I get straight up eight hours for sure on it, uh, with it, uh, and very nice projection as well. People can smell me, people compliment me, so everything is good here. Um, this one is probably one of my favorites from the whole lineup that I have here for you, so my favorite Zara scent in general. I love so many of them, but this one I think if I lost all of them, I would probably run and get Rose Gourmand first. Mainly because I know how hyped it is and I know that it might get sold out very, very soon. From time to time, it's not available at all. So yes, Rose Gourmand is fantastic. Uh, so get yourself this one if you love um, beautiful vanilla, rose, ambery, Gourmand touches. I love them. I love that DNA. It's definitely a me kind of fragrance. So yeah, these are my top, top, top fragrances from Zara, the best of the best. Uh, of course, I did not include the men's collection because I'm not that familiar with it. But if you are interested, please let me know. I will order the fragrances and re review them for you. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know which one is your favorite Zara fragrance and see you in my next video. Bye.